you give me happy eyes. My name is Paul Nisha, and I'm an artist, and this is Alfred. I think um, club kids, um, young girls and boys, are always going to be around at clubs, and they're generally invited by the promoters to uh, Zazz up the club, I think, and they probably will maybe get paid with money, maybe get paid with something else. You don't know, but so I remember when we used to uh, uh, go to clubs, we'd spend about three hours at home, sort of getting ready, having our own little party with music. And... A lot of the times when we performed in clubs, you wouldn't really get paid. Uh, in money, let's say, and they were considered to be, uh, if you were just dressing up and going to a club, someone might say, we come along, I'll give you this and I'll give you that, and called a walkabout, literally a walkabout. You'd dress up and you'd walk about, and you'd show off and steal people's drinks. Um, the drugs that were around when we first started going out clubbing were great, of course they were great. But the first time you take a certain new drug is great. Um, and then it kind of got a little bit ugly later on. Uh, I guessed with the monster crowd, the club kids in New York, I guess, started off that ketamine scene. And I don't know if you've ever had ketamine. I mean, I've never had it, but I hear it's quite nasty the K-holes and everything, and I think it did get a bit ugly. So there was a difference between the happy, happy drugs. Of course, ecstasy is great. Speed keeps you up all night. But I've seen people in K-holes and it's not pretty. It's really ugly, horrible. I think the difference between New York club kids and London club kids, maybe I, from what I've seen, I mean, I never really went to a lot of clubs in New York, but I always got the impression it was based on a lot more draggy, drag look, like, you know, paint your beard and uh, stuff. And I think um, the difference between London, I, I don't know, we maybe had a slight edge on the quirkiness and the costumes. Uh, I think we were just a little bit more bizarre in our, in our dress, and just find things that were hidden down the back of the sofa. And, well, they probably did that in New York as well, but I always saw the sort of exaggerated drag queen. That's me and my mummy. Very strange. Look at that, that's terrible. That's just, that's just not right, is it? That's probably what I looked like when I started going it was around about 26 there. Me pretending to be a fairy. We all used to go to Kinky Galinky as well, where Lee Bowery would occasionally go. Well, most of the weeks he'd go actually. And um, one night they had a, a costume talent competition, I think. Maybe they had it every night, I'm not sure. But uh, I was asked to oh, walk up on stage, and I think I, I won a trophy, I still got it somewhere. But there was a panel of um, judges, and Vivian Westwood was on the panel. And she'd seen my shoes that I'd made. I think they were like pink, pink, furry platforms with diamonds on. And I think that's what she liked with my headpiece as well. And when I was asked to come up to uh, collect the trophy, I'd, uh, in between times I'd had a drink and I might have taken something else. I can't remember what it was, but I went up without my shoes because they'd broken. I'd been dancing, they'd broken. And, uh, and she wanted me to go get my shoes, which is quite embarrassing.
But the impact on the, the drugs that we, we, we took at the time may have something to do with the fact that I find it very difficult remembering these to answer these questions. <laughs> there you go.